Hello, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Bram, Bram Geenen. I'm co-founder and CEO of Revolver. For those who don't know, Revolver is the platform where the engineering community and industry connect and can access knowledge around uh, engineering topics and uh, emerging technologies. Um, so on our platform on Revolver.com, you have companies and universities and individuals publishing articles, videos, case studies, um, and, and that kind of information. And it's also the place where we host challenges like this one with Mitsubishi. Um, at Revolver, we really believe in the positive impact that technology can make. Our mission is to provide engineers the resources that they need to innovate. And we think technology is really part of the solution to many of the challenges we have at the moment. Um, Developing these kind of solutions is not, it's not something that you do in isolation, um, neither for individuals, for startups, or for bigger companies. And therefore, this collaboration together with uh, Mitsubishi, um, it's really great. It's very well aligned with what we're trying to achieve at Revolver. Mitsubishi has an incredible wealth in knowledge and experience and resources uh, around plastics, around the circular economy. Um, so enabling our community to access that is incredible. Uh, so we're really grateful for Mitsubishi to uh, be partnering with us. And this webinar is another opportunity to share knowledge, to make connections with, uh, with US participants. And what we're going to do today is uh, start with Tim Poraj, uh, really dive um, deeper into the challenge. Tim is the uh, founder and manager of the Grove Garage. And afterwards, Dr. Lisa uh, Wagen. I'm sorry, Lisa, I'm actually not sure how I pronounce your last name, but Lisa was advisor of circular economy at Mr. Bissy. Uh, will share a few words on the circular economy, uh, and which is a topic she will dive in really deep, uh, deeply into uh, in the next webinar. Um, yeah, small housekeeping. You can leave questions in the Q and A feature. Um, we might be able to answer someone, some of them, like in the chat during the the call. But specifically at at the end of the webinar, we have some time left to uh, discuss some of the questions that pop up there. So that's it. I'm going to hand it over to um, Tim to properly introduce himself and uh, tell you much more about the current challenge. Tim, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Bram, for that uh, for that kind of introduction. And um, I must say, it has been a privilege uh, working with you, Bram, and also with, uh, with the rest of the Weevolver team uh, to really host these uh, these engineering challenges. Um, so, as said by by Bram, uh, today um, we're going to take you um, a bit more uh, through this um, circular economy challenge, uh, a bit more about the details, and give you uh, an explanation uh, around it. Um, starting at the beginning, um, as many of you know, yeah, to meet the challenges of tomorrow, we really have to nurture the visionaries of today. Um, and that's also why we are here, to really tap into those, let's say, bright minds around the world, uh, to tap into those big ideas that you have as an entrepreneur, as an innovator. Um, we very much realize that uh, these kind of challenges, uh, we can tackle them uh, by our own. Um, and we really need to build uh, an ecosystem of bright minds around the world uh, to be able to do that. Um, my name is Tim Vorage. Um, I'm the founder and the manager of the Growth Garage, um, which is actually a business accelerator of Mitsubishi Chemical Advanced Materials. Um, and we really cherish and foster open innovation. We're really looking for a uh, collaboration with, uh, with you. Um, and in the end, we very much believe that uh, technology uh, and innovations actually um, are really part of the solution to, to, to accelerate the implementation um, um, of the circular economy. And that's also why we are here uh, to really to invite you uh, to challenge you actually to be part of, uh, to be part of the solution. And maybe a little bit more uh, on the Growth Garage itself. Um, so we host this online platform where we have these kind of engineering challenges, which we do together with, uh, with, with Revolver. Um, and we are actually inviting you. 
um, to be part of that. Um, last year, we have done a, a couple of engineering challenges, uh, again, together with our trusted partner, Weevolver, uh, which resulted in, uh, in many submissions, over 80, um, and, and in the end, 23 finalists. Um, and we are working at this moment with 12 startups and scale-ups, um, and really uh, to put their big ideas in practice. Um, and it's actually a, lot, a delight uh, in doing so. Uh, furthermore, um, we also have the big community of, of Weevil for being part of that and also actually uh, um, being part of voting which of these ideas actually deserved to be put in practice. Um, what makes this engineering challenge, what makes the circular economy challenge different from what you already see out there. There are many challenges, there are many competitions. Um, besides the fact, let's say that we have different categories of winners, uh, starting with the student award winners, um, but also the community that um, is voting a winner. We have um, a very broad jury of experts, of industry experts, uh, that are supporting us, let's say, with uh, uh, judging all the different submissions. Um, and in the end, um, although many, let's say, of the challenges, they actually come with a monetary price, we are going to help you to put your big idea really in practice. And why is that? We really believe that an innovation is not only a big idea, uh, and in, a big idea really deserves implementation. And with that implementation, uh, that's something that we would like to work together with you. Um, what does that mean? Uh, we have a team of experts in the field of regulatory, in the field of life cycle uh, uh, assessments. We have advanced materials uh, with very low uh, carbon footprint, with recycled content in there. We can support you with design, with rapid prototyping, sometimes even testing, let's say, of your facility or service. Uh, we help support and support with the scaling or even doing small series production. And we also have a team that provides business intelligence. Uh, we help you with value propositions or even uh, support you to design your business model. Um, furthermore, also on Growth Garage, we provide a platform for you uh, to really share your um, ideas and also uh, convey, let's say, the message around the journey of implementation towards uh, a broader audience. Um, so all of that is to your disposal um, if you want or one of the winners of this uh, circular economy challenge. So what is this challenge all about? Um, as said, at Mitsubishi Chemical, we really have a broad range of very advanced materials, of sustainable materials with a low carbon footprint. Um, and over the last years, we have invested a lot um, to really make sure that we can enable, let's say, the transition towards a circular economy. Well, what does that mean? Um, uh, we make sure that um, we have recycling uh, capabilities at industrial scale, that we have low carbon footprint uh, materials uh, to your disposal. Um, but coming back, let's say, to a couple of slides ago and also what was mentioned by Bram, this is not something that we can do by ourselves. Uh, we need to build this ecosystem. We need to work together with you uh, and, and really um, um, look into those bright ideas that you have and support you with implementing. And uh, that's also why we decided to actually have two different categories. The first category is around recycling technologies uh, for thermoplastic materials. Um, what does that mean? Um, um, in that bucket, it's all about um, collecting materials, um, sorting them, looking at the quality, speeding up uh, the recycling, uh, reducing the costs. Any ideas that there are around, let's say, improving recycling technology, which can be either mechanical or even chemical. Um, that, those are all possibilities, let's say, to, uh, to enter this competition. The second part is around parts and products. Um, if you want to produce parts in thermoplastic polymers um, via 3D printing or injection molding or CNC machining, during that production, uh, you might produce waste. Um, um, that is waste, let's say, that would be recycled. 
Uh, you may, can make use of low carbon footprint materials that are to your disposal. Or you might even have a business model where you want to collect the parts back end of life um, and really want to bring them back into the loop. So um, all of you with ideas uh, or parts, products, where you say, mm, I want to make use of low carbon footprint materials, um, or I want to make use of the take back program um, and, and, and bring those, let's say, uh, bring that waste back into the recycle uh, flow or parts end of life um, uh, that also need to be recycled. And there you can also enter this, uh, this challenge. To go a bit more in, in detail uh, on, on how that, uh, how that uh, circular model looks like, um, our intention is really to close the loop in the industry. So a lot of, um, let's say, products, uh, parts, they really start from virgin material. Um, and of course, from that virgin material, um, if you produce um, a certain material that really can be used with certain um, um, uh, properties, um, often, let's say, um, during the production process, uh, a produ uh, um, a waste is produced. Um, the waste that we produce um, is always 100% being recycled back into this loop. Based on these materials, uh, you actually can start designing a part. Um, there, we also support you to design a part with as little material as possible. Um, and to, to select those materials with the lowest carbon footprint. Um, and we even can support you to design for recycle, uh, to make the part out of one material instead of 10 different materials, um, to make sure that the recycling end of life also becomes easier. The next one is around the production itself. Um, and there is that either with 3D printing, with CNC machining, with injection molding, whatever technology um, uh, you are using. Um, also there, during that production, um, any waste that would be, let's say, produced also can be recollected and also fed back, let's say, into this uh, circular loop. And then, of course, if you have the part uh, um, and that is being used, uh, we want to make sure that it parts in itself intrinsically has the lowest carbon footprint as possible. But it also contributes to either light weighting uh, that could result in fuel saving or friction reduction that could result in fuel saving um, or even let's say to increase the longevity of the part itself. All of that contributes uh, to reducing carbon footprints, uh, to lowering CO2 emissions. Um, and in the end, of course, we want to take back those parts um, and put them back into the loop to really close the loop in this industry. So if you have a technology, again, that either supports or improved the recycling part of it, the, the technology itself, or you have a business uh, that is interested in designing and producing uh, parts from thermoplastic materials um, and want to recollect them, um, you are all kindly invited uh, to share your big ideas with us. So what are actually the next steps and the key dates? Um, uh, the challenge um, actually opened on March 22nd, um, and we are now on the 31st with this first webinar uh, to explain you the basics around the challenge, but also around the circular economy. Um, it will be followed uh, by a further, uh, by next webinar with a further deep dive of a circular economy. Um, and on April 22nd, we actually have the early bird closure. Um, and I will come back to that. It's a very important date because anyone that uh, submits before that date um, actually uh, gets feedback from our um, um, expert panel, um, which means that you can further improve your submission and therefore, of course, also increase your chance of winning. And then you can resubmit your submission. Um, in the end, the challenge uh, will close on May 22nd um, and finalists will be announced uh, on the 31st of, of May. Um, of course, after selecting uh, the, 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 the finalists and of course celebrating that you have won the competition, that also means that the acceleration program begins. Um, and as I said, it's not about a monetary prize, but really the value that you receive 
to put your big idea in practice. And our team is looking forward to really engage with you um, 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 and, start, uh, and start this journey. A uh, final slide from, from my side um, uh, to give you some insights uh, um, and, and maybe some tips and tricks how to, how to actually win. Um, first part, of course, is the quality of the submission. Um, and we take quite a bit of a holistic view. So this is not only about the technology itself, um, but it's also um, about the commercial feasibility, for example, the scalability of your, of your product. Um, please also think about the, 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 the value proposition that you have, or even the business model. Um, those are all elements that will be taken into account uh, when looking into su your submission. Um, and if you have already done some beta testing, for example, or even produced some parts and tested this with customers, uh, that is typically proof uh, where we would invite you uh, to really share that um, in, your, uh, in your submission. Second part is, um, if you have a value proposition, how differentiated is it? Um, do we already see this around the globe? Um, or is this something that is unique, unique really to your solution? Um, if so, please, uh, please highlight this. And number three is around proof of concepts. Uh, we understand that some of the ideas are really in an early stage. Um, um, still feel free, of course, to submit. But if you have already tested, let's say, uh, those first uh, beta versions, those minimum viable products um, at customers, um, those are always very interesting learnings um, and proof points uh, that, you could, uh, that you could add. Um, lastly, um, and that's also uh, an important one, um, the team itself, um, um, because when you would be uh, one of the finalists, uh, we are also interested to hear and learn um, um, who is the team and are you capable of also executing together your big idea. So yes, we have a lot of ex experts and technologies and materials, etc., to our disposal. Uh, but it would be great also to see um, um, how your team looks like and if we can really team up together and, and also execute. Um, and then I would like to invite you, um, if you are interested, let's say, in, in, in further information um, um, around the submission, uh, but also around the sub uh, challenge itself, um, or even if you're ready to submit, please uh, look at uh, growthgarage.mcan.com. Um, um, and, and go through all the materials that you can find over there. Um, if there are some questions, um, yeah, we always uh, uh, you're always free to ask them either at the end of this webinar or feel free to get in touch with us directly. Um, that was uh, the part around the growth garage itself, the concept, the key dates, uh, uh, why we are having um, this circular economy challenge. Um, and then I would like to give the word uh, um, uh, to my dear colleague, uh, Lisa, um, and she will take you through some of the concepts around uh, the circular economy. Uh, Lisa, can I hand over to you? Thank you, Tim. Well, and thank you, Bram, for introducing Vivolver and Tim for introducing Growth Garage, and Growth Garage and our challenge. I'm very excited to be here in the webinar today and welcome to everyone who has joined us today. Um, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the circular economy. Just a small teaser, as you've already heard, we will have a second webinar on that where we go more into depth about it. So why is the circular economy important for us at Mitsubishi Chemical? Maybe start here. We are committed to sustainability and to innovation and to really yeah, improve the health and well-being of, of the people, society and our planet Earth. And yeah, the implementation of the circular economy is one part of doing that. And as you can see here, I call it the circular economy a business model for the future. What is our current business model? It's the linear economy and it really is in contradiction to the circular economy. What does the linear economy represent? Well, as you can see on the slide, um, it's linear. This means that we extract raw materials from our planet be it fossil oils or metals and other things. And we use these raw materials to make products. We use the products and at the end of their life or sometimes even before the end of their life, we dispose of the products. So we either put them into landfill or we incinerate them. And of course, this is not 
the best model to use our precious raw materials, right? Um, I have illustrated it here with the example of plastic production. You can see that over the last decades, the amount of plastics produced uh, on a global scale have significantly increased. So from 50 million tons in the 60s, 1960s, to more than 300 million tons per year in 2014. And of course, that per se is not so much of an issue. The actual issue is demonstrated in the second graph here on the right hand side, where it shows that only 5% of the plastics that has been produced will actually be recycled. And this really showcases um, the issues we're having with the linear economy, because we are using a lot of materials, but we are not using them to their full potential. So if we can find a way to really keep the materials in the economy for a long time at their highest value, we will see a benefit for our economy, our businesses, and also for our environment. This brings us really to the circular economy and the concept behind it. So the circular economy is based on three principles that I have written down here. The first one is eliminate waste and pollution. The second one is circulate products and materials in the economy at their highest value for the longest period of time. And the third one is to regenerate nature. And this really means that we have to rethink the way that we're doing business. We have to rethink the way that we design our products. We have to rethink the way that we use them and how we treat them at the end of life to really make the best out of our raw materials to decouple economic growth from uh, the use of raw materials and to really regenerate nature and make the planet a place worth living also for future generations. Could you please go to the next slide, Tim? Yeah, so here I just also want to emphasize again that this transition to the circular economy is really based on innovation, the development of new technologies and strong partnerships. And this is really important for us here at Mitsubishi Chemical. We are very curious about your ideas. We're very curious to work with you together. And uh, we are very much looking forward to your submissions. So please, if you want to learn more about the circular economy or how to further improve your submissions, join us for our second webinar uh, on the 12th of April at 4.30 p.m. here on Zoom again. Thank you, everyone. Are there any questions? There, there, is, there is one question that I saw in the, in the Q&A section. Um, which is uh, the question if the, the hardest challenge in reducing carbon footprint is actually the, the transportation, uh, which I guess is both during or around production as, as well as when bringing things to market. Um, I know, I don't know, Lisa, you, you probably have, a, have an idea on this. Uh. Yeah, transportation certainly is a big part of the product carbon footprint, as we call it but it's not um, the only part and it really strongly depends on what products you're looking at and what the production cycles look like. Um, but it's certainly a challenge, not something that we are looking for in this circular economy uh, challenge to solve, but uh, there are already a lot of good ideas around how to you know, improve your production cycles um, to really decrease the carbon footprint of transportation, also use alternative fossil, uh, alternative fuels or hydrogen powered car, um, lorries and so on. So there are a lot of ideas around that. Yeah, maybe to, uh, to, to add to that, um, it also depends a bit, uh, let's say what kind of materials you are using uh, to produce your parts. Uh, what we actually do is we quantify the contribution of each, each step in the whole value chain. Um, and it also sometimes gives direction really um, uh, towards, let's say, other elements uh, beyond transportation. Um, in the end, it's about identifying uh, which ones are the biggest contributors 
um, and what kind of solutions uh, you could implement to really reduce in the end uh, the overall CO2 emissions. Uh, so sometimes for some materials, for some products, also depending on location, that could be transportation. Um, we often also see that some other elements uh, in there, either in production or even in use, uh, that have much higher contributions to CO2 emissions. Um, and based on that quantifi quantified analysis, uh, you could actually, let's say, shift your, uh, your focus on, on other elements to, to, to reduce the CO2 emissions. Um, so with working with the finalists, uh, that is also an analysis, let's say, and an expertise that we have on board um, and that we also really can uh, support you with. Clear. Thanks, uh, Tim. Um, I saw another question in the chat that, that's probably also best answered by you. Um, Glenn asks um, that in terms of uh, like sorting, sorting technologies, I assume, um, if the challenge is, is only focusing on thermoplastic polymers. Um, yes, at this moment, uh, we are focusing, focusing on, 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 on thermoplastic polymers. Um, that doesn't mean that, let's say, in our overall portfolio, um, uh, we also have uh, solutions for, for, for other plastics like, like thermoset or composite or carbon fiber based composites. Um, but in this challenge, uh, we mainly focusing at uh, thermoplastic polymers. So, so would that mean, Tim, that um, if you have a great solution, but it's indeed focused on thermosets, would you say uh, you, uh, be better not to submit or would you say like no, I would a say chance? No, it still it still would have a chance because it's in it it's an adjacent material, um, and what we typically see is that, for example, recycling technologies or solutions um, in the field of let's say thermosets or, or in combination with, with with carbon fiber technologies that they are also translatable, let's say, to thermoplastic polymers. Um, and, and that's actually sometimes um, we see that technologies even from completely different industries. Uh, they can be used, let's say, in another uh, in another industry, and 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 and, and maybe even around already around for ten or fifteen years. Um, so, um, um, if you submit, um, um, please also for yourself try already, let's say, to 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 make this translation. Um, if you are an early bird and you submit before April twenty second, um, we already, let's say, um, are able to give you advice and and further, let's say, um, um, see how we can. Um, Tailor, let's say, the submission to make sure that you also have a good fit with, uh, yeah, with the challenge. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Um, and I can, I, and I assume, given that that you folks at Mitsubishi have uh, indeed experience in 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 in, in both uh, types of, uh, of plastic, you might be able to see some solutions that uh, that others who more experienced in one of the fields might not uh, see those 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 cross. Uh, opportunities. Um, so that's, that's that's great to hear, uh, Tim. Um, great. I think there was uh, another question. Yeah, yeah I've also seen what? a question with, yeah. with sort of like the, the, and that was a question from Jesse. Um, if the focus is more on industrial technical enablers or more on uh, enticement IDs for consumer behavior? Um, let's say, I mean, we, we are open, let's say, to, uh, to, to both. And, and, and why? Because we believe that both of them are part of the solution. Um, because in the end, um, uh, to make this, uh, to really make this fully work, yes, we should look at the industrial part, at the technologies, etc., uh, to make sure that we can recycle in the right way. Um, uh, the second part is um, uh, to make sure that we can collect parts end of life. Um, um, that also um, is connected, let's say, to the consumer behavior. Uh, it is also connected to the business model um, 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 of, uh, um, let's say, of, uh, um, of certain customers. So um, if you have a business model um, um, and somehow you can uh, tease consumers to make sure that parts are recollected end of life, um, then we also have the ability to really bring them back in the loop. So it's a vital element of, of, of this closed loop system. Um, so yeah, we are also very open to receive, let's say, any suggestions or submissions in that field. 
Yeah, great, great. And and I think that's also something what I've seen in working with you folks with the past uh, challenges that um, mm -hmm. you've also engaged with and helped uh, submissions who ultimately didn't win, but you've still been able to to help them, whether it's with advice or other support. Um, so I think that's also it's like um, in 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 any case, if if you're active in this field, it is very helpful to be uh, on the radar of of Mitsubishi in that sense. Yeah, that's true. Let's say we uh, yes, we are working and and we commit to working with the finalists uh, uh, or with the winners, um, but we are also working with uh, many of uh, many of the finalists uh, over a dozen at the moment. Um, sometimes it's difficult to even select um, um, some of the ideas. They still need to mature, um, and, and and there we still let's say um, go into an active uh, active conversation, um, and sometimes even uh, support to make functional prototypes or, or uh, let's say test uh, a certain service. So um, yes, that's uh, that's correct, Ram. Nice. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's great, and it's something. Uh... Yeah, that's not easily seen from the outset, but what we have seen as a partner, uh, something super valuable to uh, to the participants. Um, I see. I see one question uh, that, that that I can quickly answer, which is if the challenge is focused on a certain region, uh, geographically speaking, and um, well, in terms of participation, uh, you can certainly join from from any place on the planet, um, which we've seen in past challenges. We've literally had submissions yeah. from Japan, India, Nepal, Mexico, Canada, Scotland, you name it. Um, so yeah, in that sense, it's, uh, it, it, it's a global challenge. Tim, in terms of uh, maybe the solutions and technologies, if there's a, um, uh, a solution, a submission that, that really focuses on a local implementation, is is that still something where you where you sort of like focus more on certain regions, or I'm not sure if that's even something you can you can already express at this point. But what are no, your thoughts on that? It's it's yeah, it's very simple. We are a global company, um, and and we need solutions around the globe. Um, and actually, some of the recycled solutions um, um, should also be tailored to a certain region. Um, and whether it is in China or, or in US or, or in country in Europe, uh, that doesn't matter too much. Um, of course, we also uh, will make an assessment whether, uh, let's say, we can scale a certain solution uh, to be able, let's say, to use it on, on, on global level. Um, but if you have something uh, that, that works on regional level um, in whatever country, um, we are very much interested to take a look at it. Um, and then jointly make an assessment. Okay, is 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 there a possibility to 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 even scale it? Let's say on uh, on uh, on global level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is also a question if more than one idea can be submitted, and I think that's also very easy to answer, right? It is. Yeah, you you certainly can. Yeah, um, and and each idea will be evaluated uh, in uh, in itself. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, and there, there are sort of like a, a quick question about, or not? It's not a quick question actually, but it's a question about a, a specific submission. If, if uh, solutions to recycle optical fiber cables is relevant, I'm not sure it's something we can already sort of like answer on the spot. Um, that might be something that can only be answered when really seeing the submissions. But, but maybe I don't know, Tim, if if you can say something to that. Yeah, I just uh, see the question. Let's say to uh, to actually recycle them into into PBT, thermoplastic. And uh, yes, we're also active in the field of optical fibers. Um, so based on this, let's say limited information, I I, I would say yes. Uh, but I would need to see a bit more. Let's say to uh, to make a judgment with the rest of the of the expert panel. Yeah, yeah, clear, great. Um, yeah, I think if I'm looking at both the chat and the Q and A that we, um, that we have covered all the questions, if not, please, please let, let, let me know straight away. Um, and if, if we, if we didn't fully answer it well, or other questions, but, uh, you can reach out at any time, uh, and we'll, 
at least try very much uh, to help you out. Um, yeah, and again, that um, there is a great opportunity to submit before the early bird deadline, because then we can really give you feedback on the submissions itself and give you a much better chance at, uh, at putting in a great solution. So um, with that, um, I want to thank you, Tim and Lisa, for this. Um, it's very great. Uh, also, even for me to learn more, uh, even things that that, 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 that that we didn't talk about and we have had a lot of conversations. So thank you so much for all of that. Uh, thanks uh, for everyone who joined and who asked questions. Um, I hope you're all going to put in great submissions. Very much looking forward to see those coming in. And um, yeah, uh, like I said, feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also from my side, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.